There we go, perfect. Okay, so this is our lesson on ratios for lesson three. So this is literally the exit ticket, lesson three exit ticket. Only things that's been ch the only thing that has been changed on this are the values, okay? So only the values have been changed. Everything else stays the, si stays the same. So the scenario is the same, the names are the same, it's pretty much completely the same. And some of you have done this and I have graded it and um, you did pretty well on it. Um, some of you got most of it but didn't get all of it. And some of you got thrown off by the, um, if Pam has $60 in her account, uh, how much money is in her brother's uh, account? And because it asked you to show a tape diagram to support your answers, some of you just like showed me a tape diagram without actually giving me the answer. So some of you just didn't do the question all the way. And if you didn't do the question all the way, you're gonna need to do it because um, it's just gonna give you more points. Just because you get 60 on something and you can move forward doesn't mean you wanna keep the score of 60. 60 is a D. It's very close to an F 60 is. So don't just say, oh man, I passed with a D, I'm good. Yep, because that will bring down your average and we'll learn more about that when we get into statistics and probability. So, I'm gonna read this. I want you to follow along. If you cannot follow along because you cannot read this, then just listen to me and then you can read and follow along with me while you're watching it on the 4K video that will be up on YouTube. Okay. So it starts with, and I usually like to use one of my um, handy dandy meter slash yardstick. This one is a yardstick, and then I believe I also have a meter stick, but I'm going to use a yardstick. Meter and yard is almost like exactly the same. So we're going to start, and we're going to go. Cam and her brother open a savings account, okay? Savings, savings account is where you put money into. If you don't know what a savings account is, know this. Savings account is where you save money. It's an account that you put money into and you don't take money out. That's why you're saving it, okay? Open a savings account. Each begin with a balance of zero dollars. So when they start off, okay, it's zero to zero, okay? Pam has zero dollars in her account. Right? And her brother has zero dollars in his account. But for every three dollars that Pam saves in her account, her brother saves six dollars in his account. So now we have a comparison and a relationship between two quantities. Okay? Those two quantities are Pam's three dollars and her brother's $6. They are asking us a series of questions based on this information they provided in the written scenario. The first thing they want us to do is determine the ratio to describe the money in Pam's account to the money in her brother's. Okay? So determine the ratio. So first we want to come up with some symbolage, right? We want to know, okay, um, if I had to substitute out numbers for symbols, and we'll be getting into that even more so with pre-algebra, but if I had to substitute out um, letters for numbers, I'm gonna say that P is equal to Pam, and Pam has $3, to B is equal to her brother, okay, and he has $6 for every $3 she has. So, P to B, okay, is equal to three to six. Three to six. Three dollars in Pam's account, six dollars in her brother's account. P to B, three to six. We now write the description which is using the ratio language. And for those of you who are still not quite clear on the ratio language, I will be providing a re-engagement lesson on that at our 10.30 uh, 
1015 meeting, I believe? Yeah, because we have this for a half an hour. So we'll be small group 1015. Um, we'll get and go into a re-engagement for language. But you should know that it's for every there are. It's a for every there are situation. So if you can, read it with me. If you can't, save it until it's up on YouTube. But for every $3 Pam has in her account, there are $6 in her brother's. Okay? So that is the way that we describe it using ratio language. This is a four letter. Yes. Do we write all of that in our notebook? Um, I would definitely write it down in your notebook. If you can't see it well enough to write it down, because it looks on my screen a, a screen a bit scrambled, you also can't pause me right now um, or rewind me. So you might want to wait until this goes up on YouTube to copy it down into your journal. Yeah, because the writing it's kind of small. Yeah, it's going to be. Can't think small yeah, stuff. again, guys, I'm going to like repeat this so I maybe don't have to repeat this a thousand times for the rest of my life. <laughs> this is not the ideal place to copy this material down. You can listen right now, but be aware that all this will be up on YouTube so that you can yeah. pause, rewind, fast forward. Nice. You can do what Sophie did. Sophie, I'm going to give you a critical thinking point for that one. Um, you, can, you can do what Sophie did, which is to take a screenshot. If it's not that great of resolution, just wait until I upload the 4K. I'm going to upload the 4K. This is 4K camera, but it's not going to be streaming live 4K. All right. If Pam has $60 in her account, how much money does her brother have in his account? Okay. So this is where we start to get into this idea of equivalent ratios and ratio tables. Okay? And I want to let you know that there's all kinds of different ways to do this. And one of the ways that Eureka Math really wants you to know, one of the ways that Eureka Math really wants you to know is that um, you can do tape diagrams to do this kind of stuff. Okay? And so what we did here is we looked and we said, oh, OK, well, I know the ratio is 3 to 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out three squares to represent Pam's $3. Okay? I drew out three squares or a tape diagram using two lines to make three spaces. Betsy, go ahead and mute for me, please. And then her, for her brother, her brother had six. For every three Pam had, her brother had six. So we went ahead and we made one, two, three, four, five, six squares, or a box with five lines in it to give us six squares. And I said, OK, we know how much money Pam has. It tells us. It gives us that information. She has $60. But we're left wondering how much does her brother have. Okay? And we know in order for Pam's 3 to be equivalent to 60, each one of those squares needs to have 20. Each square of Pam's is equal to 20 because if we go 20, 40, 60. And because it's a ratio, what we do to one side we have to do it to the other side. Awesome. We have to do it to the other side. So we said, OK, well, Pam had three squares. And we put in 20 to make 60 because it told us that she has 60. That's the only reason we were able to do that, OK? Because they told us she had 60. So now we know that we plugged in 20 to equal 60. Now what we did to Pam, we have to do for her brother. And so we go 20 in each of these open squares. So now we got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Okay? And that is equal. That's equivalent. All right? Why is it equivalent? Well, let's take a look at why that is equivalent. And we're going to take a look using something a bit different than this tape diagrams 
Um, and I actually prefer them more because I don't have to draw anything really neat and pretty. I'm really kind of, these are like some of my best examples of tape diagrams. I'm not that good at drawing tape diagrams. Um, the larger you get with your numbers, the bigger your tape diagrams can get. So what I like to show is um, equivalent ratio table. And we talked about this before, and you guys may have already copied down some examples of this. Have they? Okay. Um, we have Pam here and her brother here. So we still have uh, P to B, right? And we know that originally, if we look back at this, for every $3 Pam saves, so we know that on the Pam side of things, I'm just going to make sure there's multiple spaces here. On the Pam side of things, we got three. Okay. How much do we have on the brother side of things? What is the quantity for the brother? Six. Six. We've got six for the brother. So we're going to go ahead and get the six down here. Okay. And now we are showing that three to six ratio that it wanted us to describe in question number one. Okay. And so we already have that information. It told us all of that. Then it gives us another value. What's that other value that it gives us? And who is that for? Pam. Pam. So now Pam has 60. Okay? And so we got to figure out, okay now. How many is in total? There's a bunch of different ways of looking. No, we're not totaling things up now. There's no addition here. Okay? I want that to be very clear because a lot of people are like, yeah, you add the two together and that's how you get the answer. And that's absolutely incorrect. You do not do that. There is no adding of these two numbers. Okay, what were the two processes we're, that we're using right now is we're using either division or multiplication. Okay, it's the same as with fractions, and it's the same way that we get to equivalent fractions. All right, and so we look at the relationship between three and six. What is the relationship between three and six? Who can type or unmute and tell me? What is the relationship between three and six? Because you can find the same number and both multiplications. Okay, so Betsy's getting close. Who else can offer some wisdom, some insight besides just Betsy? Um, Christina. Three is, three is half of six. Three is half of six. So we got three is, or what's another way of defining is? How do we define is in symbols? Equivalent, equal. Yes, the equal sign. So three is equal to half of and what is half of, what does of mean in, in math? Multiply. Multiply, right. So 3 is really equal to 1 half times 6. Or 3 is 1 half of um, 6. What's another way of saying that? Thank you so much, Christina. Uh, David. 